Today I want to start kind of a, I think a two-part series. Anybody that's been here long enough know that sometimes series are one or two, then there's really long series, then there's series where I don't know, is there ever going to be a number three or a number four? Um, it is what it is. <laughs> we do our best, but uh, if there's not a fulfillment of a series, it's my fault, nobody else. But I want to talk to you about something that's going to be controversial. And if you are a visitor here and this is the first video blog you watch, please understand I never want to be controversial just to be controversial. But someone has to talk about these things. And I don't know many people out there who are talking about this. And I hear these stories almost every day. And so in good conscience, there are some things that I talk about because I feel like they have to be addressed in order to help you the viewer move down your own recovery road further, even if it's inch by inch. Football is a game of inches. Let me tell you, recovery feels like a game of inches some days. And so I want to talk to you about bullying our spouse. And today I want to address it the easiest way, which is talking about the unfaithful spouse who likes to bully the betrayed spouse. Bullying your betrayed spouse looks like this. It's where you say, as an unfaithful, look, you need to get over it. We're not going to talk about this. You need to get over this in your own little world here and move on. That's an example of bullying. I tried it. I'm not trying to shame you if you are an unfaithful and this is what you do. But I tried it early on because I didn't know what the proper recovery methods were. And, and that's what a lot of times we do because we don't have the proper recovery methods. Or number two... We are so dysfunctional, that's just what we have as our go-to. Or number three, we still have things to hide, and so we don't want to get into all that. Or number four, we are unhealthy, insecure, and we don't want to be vulnerable. The unfaithful bully says, we're not going to talk about this. I'm not going to talk about anything related to infidelity. So you need to just get that straight and deal with it. If you want to be married to me, that's how it's going to be. They refuse to talk about it. They refuse to get into it. And then there's bullying tactics that they will use. And rest assured, I'm, I'm taking this a little bit to the extreme, not the farthest extreme, I promise you. But I'm, I am taking it to this side of the graph of, of extreme bullying because this does happen and I think there's a lot of you who are betrayed spouses who are in a situation like this and you kind of wonder what should you do and I want to tell you you're being bullied. I really want to be honest with you and tell you that in, in this situation that I'm going to describe a little bit more about today you're being bullied and you're going to have to formulate a response that you personally feel comfortable with. Some of the bullying tactics look like this. Uh, it's not uncommon for the unfaithful spouse to be in charge of finances. Sometimes the betrayed spouse doesn't even have access to the bank accounts. And so they are sitting here kind of at the mercy of their unfaithful spouse who's refusing to get help, but then kind of holding on to all of the finances, which is a very dangerous place to be. Another form of bullying is the unfaithful uses anger to intimidate or as a way to kind of put you in your place. As soon as you maybe ask a question about infidelity or you talk about reminders or triggers or you try to engage them, you are met as a betrayed spouse with anger and hostility and they are going to put you in your place and they're going to try and discourage you from ever bringing up recovery work or re recovery talk Ever again, it's a bullying tactic. Another thing that a bully will do from the unfaithful side is they'll threaten you. If you can't get over this, then we are done. And, and I, I hate to say it this way, but I am going to say it in certain situations. It's not a, a uniform issue, but there are in certain situations moments where the unfaithful knows that you, the betrayed, are kind of behind the eight ball. Maybe they know that you don't have access to the bank account, or they know that you at some level are not healthy, or they know that at some level you are dependent upon them for money, for provision, for health care, for this, for that. And so they are extremely calculated 
the bully is. He or she is completely aware of their empowerment and how they are going to box you into a corner. It's bullying. Another form of bullying is stonewalling, where they just will talk with you until you engage about anything sensitive or difficult, and then they just basically shut down and stonewall you. Won't answer text, won't answer email, won't call you, won't talk with you, won't even come home sometimes. Again, in a very kind of uh, different way, they're still bullying you. Now, I got to tell you, it's really tough. Everybody is in a different position. And so some of you may be ready to do some of these things. Some of you may be just needing to get prepared to do some of these things. Some of you might be in a position where you're like, man, Samuel, that's like aggressive. Well, I don't know if you're there yet, but here's some things that you need to consider doing eventually. Number one, you may need to think about a separation because either they need to go or you need to go, or you and the kids need to go, but you can't stay in a destructive environment if they're not getting it and they're continuing to bully you, you may need to separate. The next thing that you may need to do is you may need to get an attorney because there does come a point where you have to protect yourself financially. You have to protect your kids emotionally and financially. And so if the only way that you're going to get through to your spouse is to get an attorney, then that's what you may need to do. Now your comeback may say, Samuel, I don't even have money for an attorney. I get it. I do hear that often. You may have to borrow money. You may have to go to someone and say, look, I don't know when I can pay you back, but I'm in a life crisis here and I've got to protect myself. I, I can tell you there's a way. Sometimes you can find free legal counsel. You really can in some states, but you're going to have to be willing to do something because your protection and maybe even your children's protection are dependent upon it. Now, you have to be careful because you may use one of these um, methods, separation, attorney, what have you, and then all of a sudden you see an initial change on behalf of the unfaithful bully. But at that point, you're not looking for just an initial change. You're looking for long-term change. And a bully maybe sometimes on the front end will go, oh, okay, hold on, but it doesn't last. In fact, I would tell you a lot of times it doesn't last unless they see a prolonged effort on your side, the one that's being bullied, at saying, no, 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 it's a game changer. We're not living like this anymore. I'm not going to sit back here and be bullied by you any longer. I understand the fact that all of you are in different places, but I will tell you, you cannot allow the bully to be in charge because what's going to happen is you're going to wake up and it's going to be a year, two, three, four years down the road maybe and you're going to be really angry at yourself that you've tolerated being bullied for so long and you have not grown in your recovery work or your restoration very much at all. You're going to be very angry. So stand up to the bullying. I don't know if you're ready yet. Some of you just aren't ready yet. That's okay. But maybe it's time that you start moving the ball down the field to get ready to do something like this, because I promise you the bully doesn't change overnight.